Hashmap Megabytes. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Hashmap Megabytes, the video series that explains mega cloud ideas in bite sized chunks. Today, we are going to uh, log into AWS, create an EC2 instance from scratch, and set it up for a Python environment. First thing you're going to want to do is open your web browser and go to AWS. From here, navigate to EC2. And go to Instances. We'll launch a fresh instance using the, the latest Amazon Linux 2 AMI. And we'll keep it in T2 Micro, though this should work just fine for larger sizes. Um, all these defaults look fine for my environment, though importantly, if you're trying to log in from your local machine, uh, you'll want to make sure that your subnet is in a uh, uh, has public internet access and allows for SSH. Um, so coming down here, no IAM role uh, because we're just going to log in to give it uh, Python access um, to run you know simple programs. But if you wanted to for example, scrape data from the web with Python and then store it in S3, uh, you would then need to provide an S3 role that allows you to write that information. Uh, shutdown information, uh, stopping is just fine. Uh, no, no need to change any of this for what we're doing. Storage, um, defaults are fine. This is free tier. Um, we really aren't gonna be storing a lot of information, but if you are doing something that requires um, bigger storage, make sure you understand the difference between um, the different storage tiers, the volume types. And then tags, I know not everyone uh, uses tags, but I think they're a really good idea, especially if you're not the only one using your cloud environment. So a simple one I like to add is the owner tag. And right here, um, name is a special tag with a capital N. And this will actually show up as the name of the instance, so you don't have to edit it later. And we'll call this our general Python instance, Python 3. That's important. Now the security group. Um, oftentimes, uh, you'll get this default you know, launch wizard where it's going to create a new security group. Uh, and the way to read this, if you're new to this kind of space, it's saying what kind of access in this area. And if I switched it, right, right now it's SSH, which allows me to like remote into the instance. And that, that is correct. But say I wanted to use like Microsoft SQL. You'll notice the port range uh, changed here. Um, so these, these are really just nice, easy, understandable names for the combination of the protocol and the port range for a default instance. For a lot of these, I could configure it to use a different port range. Um, and I could just use custom as well. It doesn't really matter. But in this instance, um, SSH is nice and readable. That's what we're going to do. Um, and then the source. Um, these are this is like an IP whitelist rule. So right now, this syntax this is a CIDR range. Um, it means from anywhere. Anyone can log in from anywhere. Um, and because I'm on my home uh, network, I'm going to leave it like this because I don't have a, a static IP address. That's something a lot of people don't realize. Um, your home addresses, uh, they're typically variable, but your work address is probably static. So if you're using a VPN, um, having it standard to, to set your access to only from within your VPN, that'll keep you more secure. And then description, um, I don't think that's necessary. SSH is pretty uh, self-explanatory. But uh, I'm not going to create a new one. I, I hate <laughs> um, polluting all our security groups with all kinds of... Um, you know, only used once instances. So I'll select an existing one. Um, and it looks like our default is probably gonna allow everything. You can preview that here. So all traffic on all ports um, is, is the default. But I think this one's fine. Django demo, SG, not a good name. We'll just use this launch wizard. So here's the summary. Um, this, this all looks pretty good. We didn't do a lot to uh, change this. And launch. So key pair. This is where a lot of people I think get stuck. Um, key pair. Think of it like a password for logging into your instance. Um, you can choose an existing one, and that's that's what I have defaulted here is one of my previous uh, key pairs. But just 
to be complete. Let's create a new one and name this descriptively because uh, you'll, you'll, as working with the cloud, um, you'll collect quite a few key pairs and you want to make sure you know what this is. So I'll call this uh, my um, my general Python 3 instance key pair. And I'll download that. And I'll put that just on desktop for now. That's fine. And I'll move that to a better home later. And we'll launch the instances. Or just one in this case. So that'll take a little uh, a little bit to get launched. We can go back to EC2 and to our instances to monitor that. But that's only one part of it. When this thing fires up, it's a fresh, um, is going to be a fresh Linux VM, really. So you won't have Python three in in this in this demo. We're going to need that. So let's go back to the desktop here. And I have I have two files now. I have this um, key pair, this PEM file that uh, we just downloaded, and then I have this EC2 setup script. So let's open the the terminal and get into the desktop. So first thing, uh, I don't want that pen just sitting there on the uh, the desktop, and I want to put it somewhere that's um, safe. So I have in my home directory. This dot SSH directory, and this is pretty standard for a lot of your SSH um, keys. And I have a folder in there called EC2. So I'm going to go ahead and move this into that EC2 folder so I can keep track of it over time. Um, And then when I, use, when I do eventually SSH into the machine or if I try to copy into it, I, I know where that file is. Um, otherwise, let's look at this setup script. So it's uh, just a bash script. Um, first, we're gonna install Python, um, Python 3. So uh, yum is the package manager that'll come default with this, but it's similar to like apt-get or uh, brew if you're on a Mac. Uh, just a way to install packages. So I'll update the installer. Um, the dash Y just means do it without asking me yes or no to confirm. And then I'll install Python 3. Uh, next is I'll set up a Python virtual environment, which if you're not doing today, it's a pretty good habit to get into, especially if you intend to run multiple like different programs on this um, EC2 instance. That way their dependencies don't interact with each other. So I'll create that and then I'll activate it. Uh, and then I'll install just our requests library. This library is for sending HTTP requests, RESTful interactions uh, in Python usually use this. And this is a great starting point if you do wanna do like custom REST data aggregation for your data warehouse ingestion. Okay, so this looks good, but it's on my local machine. How do I get that onto my EC2 instance? So if we go back, um, looks like it's running, um, maybe initializing still. So let's try to um, SSH into it. So the first thing we'll need is its public IP address. And we can get that up here. Um, or really it's its DNS name, you can get the IP. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is more readable, maybe barely, uh, but this is shorter, so I'll grab this. Um, and you can see some other information about the instance here. Uh, one thing to note, if you do like turn this off at some point and turn it back on, these values will change. And that can be, that can be tricky if you like build like scripts that are gonna rely on this IP address not changing. Um, in a different section, we can talk about using elastic IPs to make sure that doesn't change. It can be the same IP. But for now, we'll just grab this. And we will SSH into the, the instance. Um, the command, uh, the syntax is SSH-I, um, and then we'll point to our PEM file that, that we uh, saved earlier. And then we will use EC2 user, and I wanna check that. So different versions of EC2 Linux will have a different default user. And if you want like kind of a cheat sheet, by clicking connect up here, this is a new option. Um, we can select what kind of connection we're trying to make. And in this case, we're using an SSH connection. And I can see that, okay, well, I forgot a step here. I need to ch change the permissions on that key pair to be able to use it. So we'll go back here.
Okay, so that chmod, this is giving me permission to use this as a key where default, um, we would not be able to. And then the full command, um, kind of easy to use here, is ssh-i pointing to the key pair. And then um, ec2-user is the default um, kind of login username to get into this instance. So you can copy this, or I'll just go back here. Uh, and I'll grab this right here. Okay, uh, so if I click enter, it'll ask to confirm that this is a, a trusted um, endpoint, and it is. And now I'm logged in. You can see that my um, kind of descriptor here has changed from my home stuff to EC2 user. And if I try to run Python, uh, you'll see it's uh, Python 2.7, which does come default. And if I try to run Python 3, we don't have anything. So that's kind of the state when it first comes up. So let's get this uh, bash script in here so that we can install Python. So in a new tab, I will uh, go back to the desktop. And then I will use uh, SCP. So SCP, it's secure copy. Um, it's really similar to the CP command, the basic copy in a Linux shell. Um, but this allows me to copy across um, machines. So I will do dash I just like before to get the um, key pair. And then I will copy just our setup script to that endpoint. Let me grab that endpoint again. And I could specify where to put it. And just the home directory is fine. Okay, so that worked pretty quickly. Um, if we had a much larger file, it would have shown the, um, you know, the upload statistics as it went along. So I can come back into my EC2 instance and list, and there's the setup script. So we can run that with just sh. And it is updating yum, it'll install Python, and then it will create that Python environment for us. Um, it's typically a good idea if, you, if you're working in like a DevOps capacity or administration for um, any sort of cloud to have these setup scripts um, in a central place where your team can find them and maybe even have them in S3 so that it becomes a lot, you don't have to SCP, you could just grab them from S3 here. Uh, and that allows you to like create run books uh, for like disaster recovery or like if something's going wrong, you need to investigate like the memory uh, on a production database instance that's hosted on EC2. Um, these things are really useful for that kind of activity. Now, if I tried Python 3, it works. I have Python 3 here, and I can import uh, requests, but that won't work because it's not found. So I will have to activate this new Python environment, and that command is source and activate. And again, you'll notice a little change here, um, indicating we're in a different environment. And let's do Python. This time I don't have to write Python 3 because I'm in a Python 3 environment, uh, which you can see there. And then import requests works just fine. So I can send a get request um, wherever. We could probably do Google right here. Okay. And that is the Google homepage uh, in all its glory. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, stick around for uh, additional cloud and data tutorials. Hashmap megabytes.